So, kata is basically a small programming exercises uh, for developers to practice. So, let us decide up uh, a small kata. Say, find the factor. So, suppose you have to write a program for uh, finding the prime factor. Everyone knows so what is prime factor? Okay. So, prime factors is the multi for any number multiples. Uh, so that these multiples should be prime numbers. So, for example, uh, one obviously uh, one. So, <laughs> no, right. For two, prime factor mm -hmm. will be add of two. So. My function, if I pass 2, it should return me an array 2. For 1, it should return empty array. For 3, prime factors of 3 will be 3. Now for 4, what will be the prime factor? It will be 2 and 2. Only for 5, it will be 5. Again, for 6, will be sorry 2 and 3 for 7 it will be 7 for, uh, for 8 you can say it will be 2 and 4 but this is a problem 4 is not a prime number so we need to further divide it 2 comma 2 uh, for 9 it could be 3 comma 3 uh, say some other number say 25 it will be 5 comma 5 for 50 we can say 2 and 25 but again 25 can again divide into 5 uh, 5 so it's clear uh, what is prime factor so if I give this number as an input I should get this as a output. So we have to write a program for that. To start any project, uh, say, and here, so let me create a new project directory. Time factor. Okay. Uh, how do you start a project? In PHP world, nowadays uh, we are uh, using Composer. So to start off, I will say, say <coughs> Composer in it. It will initiate my empty project. Obviously, I am expecting Composer is already installed. Okay. So it will ask a uh, few basic questions. What will be your package name? So I want to accept that. Uh, Kapesha Amatrash Prime Factors Enter Description I don't want to give any description or I can say um, Kata Learning or Whatever your uh, description of your project is Author Accepted Minimal Stability Nothing Package Type uh, It's a project not a library License, MIT. You want to define the dependencies? No, at that moment I don't want to define. You want to define dev dependencies? No, at that moment I don't. So this is going to be the uh, JSON for my composer.json. Uh, confirm, yes. Confirm, generate. So now if I do uh, ls, I have composer.json. So, Let me start with uh, from my project. Again, uh, I also might want to save that project on git. So let's do git in it. Git in it. So my initial, uh, my blank repository will be initialized. That's fine now. Uh, for any project, uh, we generally have first commit. So, say 
readme.md What about the little description? So I have two files. Uh, so first, first commit I add that. Well, it is always a good idea to uh, make a very small first commit uh, so that uh, if you want to check the difference between the commits, you can easily check it. So never uh, do major work at the first commit. Okay, I have PHP Storm. Uh, I open that. Yeah, TDD workshop, prime factors, open. Now, I have to install uh, PHP in first. I go to PHP Unit website. What are the ways to install that? Uh, I can download it, but no, I don't want to download. Um, install PHP Unit uh, using Composer. So, there's a simple command uh, Composer require dev PHP Unit. Uh, sorry, this one. So, I want to upgrade uh, any PHP Unit version on uh, PHP 6. I mean, PHP 6 works only with, uh, PHP Unit 6 works only with PHP 7. So, you must ensure you have uh, that installed, PHP hyphen V. For me, it's PHP 7.1, so it will definitely work. What I can do, I can uh, run that command. Um, it will take some time, uh, and once it is done, So you can see now in required dev, yeah, uh, version uh, 6.1 or higher in 6 series. Now next thing, I want to uh, make some folder for uh, my source code. So they create a new folder, mm, SRC. I'll put all my source code there. Then I also have to write test cases. So I create one more uh, folder, say tests. My test cases uh, will be placed there. Now, everyone knows about namespacing. Um, okay, uh, before thing, uh, this is one uh, vendor folder. Uh, whenever you do that, uh, yes, that is. So Composer actually provides a very nice way to offload your classes if you are using proper namespacing. So namespace was introduced in PHP 5.3, so I assume everyone knows that. Is there anyone who don't know a namespace? Okay. So there is one file, autoload. And this file actually, um, I get it from a Composer, autoloadreal.php. From there, it has the code to uh, include all the files. So you just need to include uh, that composer, uh, uh, sorry, autoload.php file in the project, uh, maybe in your front controller or whatever first file uh, you want to run. And once it is done, all the code, all the dependencies uh, of the code can be uh, taken using namespaces. You just need to use use keyword and it will be taken. But before that, we need to tell the composer where my source and test folders are. So, okay, uh, these are the new folders I created. We, uh, composer don't know about that. So, you want to see the example? Mm. Get her. I developed one package, so it will be a quick example. 
So whenever we want to define uh, something for auto loading, we have to define these two things. That will again. What is the difference between require, require dev, auto load, auto load dev? The dev part will be loaded only on your dev offline machine, not on the production. So I copy these two files, uh, these two lines, and paste it here. So what it is saying, whenever I say namespace php reboot, it should look into source uh, php reboot folder. While on development box, that is only for production. When I uh, am on development box, php reboot will also uh, mean test slash php reboot. So in that way, I can define it. So we have changed the uh, auto loader, so we can simply do Composer update. So it will do it. Now, in TD development, should I first write test or pull? Test. Right? Our requirement is clear. You have to write a function to get the time factor. Or anyone uh, want to do any other example? So let's write test. So I need to first make some namespaces. So directory. First, it should be PHP reboot or whatever you define. That will be initial uh, namespace. Then for different folders, I can define different things like. Uh, Kata, okay, and then the new directory, prime factor. Now I have to write a test say new PHP class. Mm. I have to follow that namespace. So my class name be, will be prime factor test, any test class has a suffix test, namespace, uh, I have to follow that, uh, php reboot, slash kata, slash prime factor, okay, so I got a new class, you can uh, remove auto generated stuff. But again, that's a test case. Uh, for writing any test case, if I go to documentation, we always need to include one test case class. So you can simply, uh, after defining our namespace, I can uh, put that class. And after that, I need to extend it. Extend test case. It should now work. No. There's one more setting to be done. For PHP unit to work, it needs uh, a php unit.xml file. So I can just copy paste it from here. I'll explain what uh, this file is doing. Just hold on. So I create a new file. New file php unit.xml and paste it. Uh, what this file is doing. It is basically uh, the initial setting that the uh, PHP unit will look for. So first thing is bootstrap when the auto load. So I will know what is bootstrap. That is some initialization process. So PHP unit will load this file for some initialization and uh, this is exactly our uh, vendor auto load. So with this it will get 
is the knowledge of all the namespaces we are using. Uh, we already defined it in composer.json. And composer update, uh, our autoload.php has been updated. So all the information will be there. Now we have to define a test suit. Mm, Data test suit or whatever you want to define. Uh, so I have say test PHP reboot. This is my test suit. So any class within this is a test. Filters, I want to apply a dot PHP in source PHP reboot. So I want it is not there right now, but it will be. Then code coverage. Uh, let me comment it for now. But you can check the code of this. For that, you must have Xdebug installed. And test log generator. So uh, we'll uh, come to that file later. So that is just logging purpose. We'll come to it later. Now, I have to write a test. Obviously, I need to uh, include the file I need to test. So I say use php reboot slash kata slash factor slash prime factor now uh, let me write a simple test public function any test function should start with test. A simple test. Uh, uh, this not assert to go. So I delete should pass. Now I go to console and now again I have not installed PHP event. Have I installed it? Yes, I did. When I say uh, we need PHP in it, it is already installed. Where it is available? In vendor. Any executable is available in bin folder. So my path is vendor bin PHP in it. Either I can have local installation or I can use uh, that composer installation. So what I can say, vendor bin PHP in it, it will run. Pass. Again, uh, do I have that class? No, but it, it still does this. Why? Because I didn't need it. So let me do one more thing. Protected dollar. Uh, like constructor and destructor, in PHP unit you can have functions like setup and teardown. So setup function will be called before each and every test and teardown will be called after each and every test. So what I can do, public function setup and I can initialize Uh, my local variable prime factor. Now let's try it once again. Now I get it. Because this time I am actually going to create an object of a class which is not existing. So how will uh, how can we fix it? We obviously need to define that class. Uh, let's go new directory php the boot directory kata new directory prime factor 
now a new class we have to match that prime factor i need a namespace is the boot slash carta slash prime factor sorry where okay thanks yeah okay so this file is there you can uh, remove auto generate and start okay my class is there so my test should now pass test test so i will not do anything until unless my test is failed that is test drive problem right? so yes my class is there now again before every test i want it after every test it should be destroyed tear down i could save so before every test i create a object of prime factor and after every test i destroy it now what exactly we want to do uh, i want to uh, test generate for what was our requirement if i give one it should return and empty it uh, generate for one return empty add it so now i can do actual equal to this prime factor dot generate for one and it should return empty array so i can do this dot assert same my expected empty array my actual i had already called that function save it into actual so dollar actual you can also give a uh, third optional parameter or uh, a message when it fails so let's write some message actual is not of oh, whatever uh, message you want to give that is for your own understanding so now let's try obviously it's failed and it not actually fail it gives an error what is the error call to to undefined method generate that is obvious do we have a generate method there so now let's remove that error public function generate now there should not be error we go there run it again okay there is no error but this time it failed and why it is fail fail asserting that null is identical to array or basically empty array so we are not returning anything that means we are returning null so what we can do just to make that test pass okay what is the least amount of code of code that will make that test pass return empty error so my first test pass my this condition pass i have to uh, go for that so i write another test public function test 
generate for to return to I can't actually copy paste that I don't like that thing but we are copy pasting that means uh, we are uh, repeating something so for do what should happen we will refactor it or don't buy it. so for do it should return an array with do let's run that test this time there are two tests and one failure so my first test is still passed but second test failed fail to assert that array we have written empty array from the board is equal to array with two. Now, let's fix it what is the least of amount of code we can write to fix that again now we are passing a number there but it should not change anything same error what is the least amount of code that will fix it Oh, that's very simple thing. If I uh, do it like that, will it fix it? It will fix second test, but my first test will fail. So now I have to write a condition. Uh, let's say if dollar number is greater than or equal to one. return to will it fix it confirm it oh, what happens okay sorry if it is greater than 1 it fixed let me move to next step for 3 it should return 3 so I go there Again, if we are doing copy paste, that means we are doing something wrong. But for now, let's do it. For three. Okay. That is my test for three. It failed. Why? We are returning two, but it was expecting three. Least amount of code to fix that. Sorry? Okay. The least amount of code, I can say do this. Don't worry about code quality, I will come to that. So if it is greater than 2, I will return 3. Will it fix it? Let's confirm. For four, let's write one more test, but this time it is a little different. For four, do I want four? No, I want two and two. So for generate four, I want an array with elements two and two. Will it pass? No. We are returning 3 and it is expecting 2 and 2. What can be done? So we have to fix it. The least amount of code to fix it. So what is the least amount of code to fix that? For 4? Uh, for 4, again, don't worry for code quality for now. If dollar number uh, is written or I can say equal to equal to 4, return to comma 2. Is that fine? So, confirm it. Yes all test cases is fine but now uh, we
we said in this screen particularly we write test case we make it pass write test make it pass but occasionally we refine one is this code looking good i have already see there are four written statements of it should not happen i can at least fix that part immediately so i can say primes is an empty array now instead of returning i can say all of primes equal to the dollar primes equal to this dollar primes equal to this and finally returning dollar primes so at least i fixed one problem uh, i had uh, multiple uh, return statement that is fixed but is it running oh it failed it failed twice why uh let's see uh, for uh, two we are expecting two and we got three so for two we got three so probably now i have to write it exactly if it is So it should pass now. Equal to equal to two. No answer. But again, there are lot of if. Is it good? And again, now I know it will fail again as soon as I move to five. So what can we do for that? Anyway, yeah, but what is the business logic that we have to think? Okay, mm. that is the special condition, right? So for now. Let me comment out that. So I have just three test cases. I commented out so that I do not worry about that. Now, what I can do is um, why. number is greater than one up oh, no a simple fix if number is greater than one instead of returning making primes to a specific number i can say it is right then i can remove all other things now for now just comment it will it succeed yes it is still succeeding so now i can remove that and obviously it is still succeeding now i uncomment this function and it will again fail so for four it will return four but what i was expecting 22 what we can do anyway what we can do okay 
means trend of tag while instead of putting it as number I say it is 2 dollar prime divide equal to 2 so I don't got what I do so I put it in a loop until unless it is greater than 1 I am adding 2 to the primes and again at the same time uh, sorry not primes I am dividing the number by 2 so it will pass will it work just look at it is it clear what I did that's it mm. That three failures. Okay. Uh, I have to do it. I have to add that number to the array. Then for three. Now probably uh, we need that part as well those three so if dollar number is greater than one we still need that dollar primes equal to dollar I want to do it only if it is divisible by two more two equal to zero so I am checking if number is divisible by two <coughs> I am adding two as a prime factor and dividing that number by two so if it is four four more two is zero so I am adding two and dividing the number by two so number will be two but again two more two is still zero so that loop will again run so it should now fix the problem yes now all four tests pass and I so yes that is a uh, pretty good for till 4 but now I come to the end is my test case is, uh, looking fine if I have to test uh, 100 conditions should I write uh, 100 test cases so here we can use what we discussed in data provider so for now I comment out all the test cases and public function test okay uh, no before that I want to show you something else so again okay, uh, we discussed about log in PHP unit So let's see that file or uh, better uh, we see it in the browser so, dev td workshop prime factors log this is your generated output generate for one returns empty array generate for two returns two generate for three returns two generate for four return two Phase two. So, none of you ask why I am taking uh, names like that. Yes, that is one of the reasons. So, how should we name our test cases? Again, we should not write the whole sentence, but again, it should be very specific what we are actually testing in that test case. So. It is camel cased before any capital letter it will introduce it will remove a test and before any capital letter it will introduce a space so generate for one return empty array and what was the output generate for one return empty array so if someone is uh, 
non technical person is uh, testing that law he will identify okay uh, functionality is doing this 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 okay so it is working fine so while naming uh, your test cases just uh, remember uh, that so now i can comment all of them now i write a new function public function test generate now i want to give some data to it so what could be the data what is my input and what is expected output so i can say dollar input dollar expected so if i have two in, uh, numbers input this one and ex expected output what we are writing here so what i can actually do i can uh, simply copy paste it here I'll do dollar input and here dollar expected. But again, uh, we need to provide the data. I will pass uh, parameters to a function. So for that, uh, test uh, annotation data provider. We can give a name. Generate data provider, or simply generate provider. What I have to do, I have to define another function, public function, a same name. Generate provider. What that function should do, it should return an array of array. Return in this array, each element will be one set of input. Uh, again, I need uh, two parameters, so I again need to give an array. First will be input for one, it should return empty array. For two, it should return array with two. For three, it should return array with three. For four, it should return array with two and two. <coughs> so now only these two functions can replicate that. Let's test it. Yes, it is still have four test cases. That means I can simply delete all of them. So yes, we have something defined right now. Now let's move to our next test file. Now testing is very easy. All I need to do is introduce the data provider. For five, we are expecting array with five. Let's check if it is uh, passing. Yes. Earlier we have four tests. Now we have five tests. It is still passing. For six, it should return two and three. Will it pass? See the code. Will it pass? Sure. Let's see. Pass. Why? We are given six. Six mod two is zero. So prime factors will come to 
and 6 will be divided by 2, now it becomes 3. Is 3 mod 2 is 0? No. So it will simply exit. Now, if number is greater than 1, it will add number there. So we get 2, comma 0. So it works. For 7, it will work. Right? For 8, it will work. 2, 2, 2. Let's test for 9. For 9, we are expecting 3, comma 3. Will it work? Now it will fail. We are expecting 3, comma 3. But what we actually got? 9. Let's come to the code. 9 mod 2 is 0. Is it? No. So it will simply come out of that. If number is greater than 1, if 9 is greater than 1, is 9 greater than 1? Yes. It will simply add 9. Can we fix that? Now we got a new test which is failing. We have to fix that. Uh, it will work for 9, but um, will it then work for 25? But now, yes, we started refactoring, so think about that as well. Yes, I will not uh, write uh, test cases for till 1000, right? I have to stop somewhere. So, Uh, number is already there. Uh, let's introduce a new. Okay. It is failing. Yeah? So, now I have to update the business logic so that it works for 9 as well. But while doing so, I need to make sure my earlier test cases are not failing. How can we ensure? Here the power of TDD comes in. What I can do, temporarily, I remove that. So my test case again should be passing. Okay. Now if I make any change, there should be no failure. Right? So let's make the change. Let's take it uh, a name or no, what we can use uh, say factor. equal to 2 and what I am going to do simply replacing it with factor so it should not fail right? what I exactly do I just replace that factor with that 2 with a variable confirming yes great Now, once it is done for 2, I should check it for 3. Once it is done for 3, I should check it for 4. Seems like a loop. So, what I can do, I can write one more loop here. Why? Number is greater than 1. So I obviously want that thing. But at the end, I will increase factor by 1. I mean, what I did? So let's check. My test cases are still passing. Now, will it work for 9? Let's check it. Yes, it worked for 9 as well. So, what exactly we did? When we pass 9, 9 is greater than 1. So, it will go in. 9 mod 2 factors 2. Is it 0? No. We will simply get out of that. 
But now what we did? Factor is 3. Now, number is still 9. So, we are saying 9 mod 3 is 0. Yes, it is. So, we added 3 and we divided it by 3. So, my number becomes 3. Again, uh, 3 mod 3 is 0. We add another 3. 3 becomes 1. Now, number is not greater than 1. So, we will add to it. But probably, I don't need that answer. Uh, let's confirm. Yes. So, I will not identify anything. I will let test identify that. So, yes, it is now working. Uh, we can test few more tests. Okay, so for 10, it should be 2 comma 5. Let's see if it works. It works. Let's add few more. Say 25, it should be 5 comma 5. It works. A few more for 50 it should be 2 2 and 25 but again 25 is 5 and 5 now, that is 3 let's see if 3 are working yes anyone want to suggest any other example that we should test 99 okay what should we get for 99 uh, 99 is not divisible by 2, so it will come 3, becomes 33, it will again come 3, becomes 11, so it should be 3, 3, 11. Correct? 99 should be 3, 3, 11. Is it working? It was. And I want to suggest any other example. Okay. 121. It should be 11, comma 11. So, our code is complete. We have done that code. But is it looking good? Can we refactor it? So, remember our cycle is write test, make code to make the test pass and at the end refactor. So, is there any chance of refactoring? No? What is the difference between for and while? I can see there is an initialization. I can see there is a condition. Uh, and I can see there is an increment. So, what I can do for no initialization, uh, no, uh, no increment, it should work. Let's not decide. Let our test should decide that. Yes, it is working. Now, if I have a condition there, can I do it here? Should it still working? Yes, yeah, it's working. Then probably I could put that initialization here. It should it still working? Let's confirm. Let us decide that. Yes, it is still working. Now similarly, I can do here as well. So I can say for.
do small steps. It should be working. Yes, it is working. Now, this part, I can put it here. And it should be still working. Yes, it is working. So, by changing while to for, we remove three lines. One line, two line, and three line. So yes, now it is properly refactored. So finding a prime factor and just say seven line. So we can say it is properly refactored.